Dave Palumbo here with an RX Muscle Supplement and Science Education, as I like to call it. A lot of people out there have contacted me. You know, recently, you know, we see a lot of people going down with heart attacks and blockages of the coronary arteries. I just we had Guy Grundy on the show uh, last week with Lee Priest, and he was saying how he had a heart attack over the course of five days. He had blockages in two of his coronary arteries. You know, this is something that has nothing to do a lot of times with bodybuilding or bodybuilding, you know, gear or the lifestyle. A lot of times it just happens to do with bad genetics, you know. You have a, a family predisposition to have high LDL cholesterol carriers, to have blockages in the coronary arteries, to lay down calcium deposits. Is there anything we can do about it? That, that's the question I get asked. How do I combat this? What do I do? A lot of people just come back to me, hey, you know what, I got blood work done. I have very high LDLs, which is the bad cholesterol carriers. LDL cholesterol carriers are the ones that kind of traverse and travel through the body and just drop off gunk in the, in the blood vessel walls. And we don't want high levels of LDL. The HDL cholesterol carriers are the good ones. Those are like the vacuum cleaners that kind of go around and suck up all the, all the stuff that's kind of like laying around. The, you know, for most bodybuilders who use gear, however, their HDLs are suppressed. So that means the, the cleanup crew is not so great. Uh, but if your LDLs, okay, the bad cholesterol, is not high, then, it, then those suppressed HDLs don't really matter as much. But some people have a family predisposition for high LDL. And usually high LDL is, is paralleled or correlated with higher degrees or higher likelihood of, of blockages in the coronary arteries. So what can we do for this? Uh, number one, you know, obviously I've been advocating essential fatty acids. You know, there's two, there's, there's basically two families of these essential fatty acids and they fall under the, I guess, the umbrella of polyunsaturated fatty acids. Uh, of the polyunsaturated fatty acids, we have omega-3s and omega-6s. Um, the balance of these two is really important because predominantly the omega-6s, specifically arachidonic acid, are the inflammatory uh, uh, essential fatty acids. And then the non or the anti-inflammatory uh, fatty acids are usually the omega-3s. And so when you have the perfect one-to-one -one ratio or balance of them, they kind of neutralize each other and you don't have excessive inflammation in the body. Um, you do need some inflammation, especially for bodybuilding purposes, to build muscle. So you don't want to have too little inflammation either. So you, that's why you want these things balanced. Um, interestingly, now they have actually blood work you can go for, which could actually tell you your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. I haven't had that done yet. I should go get it done just, just out of curiosity. Um, however, so I've been a very big advocate of taking you know, essential fatty acids. We have a product called Omegalyze from Species Nutrition which is you know, three grams of fish oil, which is very high in the omega-3 uh, intermediates, EPA and DHA, which are the two uh, essential fatty acids in that family that actually you know, reduce you know, inflammation and do all the good stuff. And then of course you have your uh, omega-6 fats in here coming from evening primrose oil, which is a, a great source of GLA or gamma linoleic acid. And that is one of the really good omega-6 fats. It actually has an anti-inflammatory effect as well. Now the other omega-6 intermediate, which is known as arachidonic acid, is the pro-inflammatory. That's the one that causes inflammation, which in excessive amounts is not good if it, if it overshadows the anti-inflammatory you know, uh, essential fatty acids in the body. But it is good if you're trying to build muscle. So you, wanna have, you don't wanna have no arachidonic acid in your body. It's an essential fat, but most of us get a lot of it. If you eat chicken, red meat, you probably get it over whole eggs, you get arachidonic acid in your diet. For people who are maybe like um, fish eating, you know, I wouldn't call them vegetarian, I guess you could call them pescatarians. They only eat fish, they don't eat red meat or they don't eat um, chicken, but they eat fish and, and egg whites and, and, and whey protein. They probably don't have enough arachidonic acid. So there's a balance, but I don't put arachidonic acid in this formula because most of us get enough of it. What we want to do is get those anti-inflammatory uh, fatty acids into the diet. And so that's really important. And when we talk about the omega-3 intermediates, you know, that are found in that omega-3 family, EPA and DHA being the two important ones, they found recently through, you know, a lot of studies and on, on different groups of people that pure EPA oil, okay, if you just use the EPA, nothing else, can actually have a, a, a coronary artery opening or, you know, 
clot reducing effect, meaning it can actually act like Drano and clear out those coronary arteries. So of course the drug companies had to jump on top of that and they have a prescription form of pure EPA oil okay, that you can get. It's super expensive. If you're, you know, if you have severe blockages in your coronary arteries and it's documented by a cardiologist, a lot of times your insurance will cover that. But for most of us, that's not the case. But you can go, and there's a company known as Omega Via, and I've talked about this before. Omega Via makes an over-the-counter pure EPA oil. Uh, they're in 500 milligram capsules. You need to take four of those a day, 2,000 milligrams a day, to get this artery clearing effect. Now, if you don't have any blockages in your coronary arteries, it's, you don't need to, you know, to do that. So a lot of you know, the doctors, the cardiologists, have been writing prescriptions for this pure EPA oil and or recommending, if these guys even know, to take this. However, you never want to throw the balance of the EPA and DHA component of omega-3s off either. So it's kind of um, um, misinformation in a sense that a lot of that the drug companies are sending to us and that these cardiologists are sending to only take the EPA oil if you want to improve you know, your, your health and well-being. Because uh, while the EPA can still can clear out these vessels, supposedly, according to the research, you still need the DHA DHA component, okay, for your eye health and for your brain health. Remember, the brain is, is made up of a lot of fat. I mean, that's what conducts all the impulses. So essential fatty acids is very important to brain uh, development, to brain healing, to brain renewal and regeneration. So you don't want to uh, limit these essential fatty acids. Not to mention, as far as muscle gains go, these essential fatty acids are components that are made up of all the cell membranes that surround the muscle cells. So when you break down muscle tissue, while most of the muscle cell is made up of protein, which is why we eat so much protein, the outer portion of the cell membranes are made up of essential fatty acids, as well as some saturated fats. So you need to take in fats, okay, to help optimally repair these membranes. And that's why I'm a big advocate of fats and always have been in bodybuilding terms. Only recently have I really, you know, focused on the health uh, aspects of these essential fatty acids because obviously as I'm getting older and as all us bodybuilders are getting older we need to consider that as well we don't want to actually be unhealthy individuals so these essential fats serve a dual purpose muscle repair okay um, production of these what we call prostaglandins okay which are basically the intermediates that are produced from the EPA DHA GLA and arachidonic acid and uh, obviously the ability also to keep our heart healthy and if you have a problem and you have a blockage to clear that out. Now, how do you know you have a blockage in your coronary arteries other than having a heart attack or you know having pain in your chest? Well, we've talked about this before too. You can go now, rather than the old way, they had to stick a catheter up your, you know, through your groin and thread it up through your vessels and go check your heart out. That was called an angiogram. With now they can give you what's called the cardiac CT scan. They literally, you know, some, they put a little dye into an IV for like two seconds and then they take an image uh, using a CAT scan machine and they can actually visualize the coronary arteries, how open they are, if there are blockages there, if you have anything to worry about. It's a good idea to get that done if you're over 35 years of age or maybe younger if you have a history of uh, heart disease in your family, just to know. And then I recommend people get it done every five years just to see how your, your, your coronary arteries are looking. Um, I have you know, other problems, but I have no blockages in my coronary arteries, no calcium buildup, and I'm lucky because my dad had you know a triple bypass when he was in his you know in his 70s, but he also smoked his whole life, you know, and that doesn't help. That obviously increases the risk of that, and he didn't eat well, you know, for most of his life, and you know, diet is huge, so you you don't have to be a victim of your genetics if you eat right, if you take the right essential fatty acids. Okay, and if you do have a, 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 a some blockage or the beginning of a blockage, start taking that EPA oil at 2,000 milligrams per day from a Omega Via and just stay on it. But the take home messages don't neglect the full spectrum of essential fatty acids as well because they're necessary for brain, eyes, and other, and muscle repair as well. So you could take your, your Omega Lies you know, your three pills twice a day to get your three grams of fish oil, 2,600 milligrams of evening primrose oil, which is those omega-6s. Um, and then you can also take the pure EPA oil if you need it to help with the blockages or any kind of potential blockages in those coronary arteries.
this is, this is easy stuff, guys. You know, I explained a lot of science here, but the take home message, if you didn't want to listen to any of it, and you didn't understand it, and it, it doesn't matter. Take your essential fatty acids. If you have a family history or predisposition for blockages, or you have some blockages, take your EPA oil on top of this, and guess what? You're good to go. You can, you can you know, relax. Now, if you eat you know, uh, foods that are high in good essential fats, like wild-caught salmon, or grass-fed beef, or omega-3 eggs, that's even better. You know, if you eat nothing that has good essential fatty acids in it, because you don't, those are just foods you don't like, or you don't have access to them, or too expensive, whatever the case may be, then you might even want to take a little bit more of these essential fats, just to ensure you have enough, especially if you're a big guy, or, and you train real hard, and you want to make sure, because you think about it also, if your body thinks that it's, that it's devoid, or is not getting in enough of these essential fatty acids, and remember, your body can't make these essential fats, that's why they're called essential. You have to consume them. If your body's not getting enough of these, and you're trying to burn fat, getting ready for a competition or something like that, your body is, is, is first priority is not to let go of body fat. It's going to think it's in a fat-deprived state, even though you may be eating enough of the other fats coming from red meats and chicken and stuff like that. But if you're not getting the essential fatty acids, your body will hoard fat and fight you. And that sometimes is a reason, at least I see it in women a lot, why they have trouble getting their lower bodies lean enough because they're not taking in enough essential fatty acids. And you know, because women have the hormone estrogen in their body, that makes it even harder because the estrogen wants to hoard fat too. So you never want your body to think it's deficient in anything or sense that it's deficient in anything because then what it does is it, it, it fights you. And if it's fighting you, it's going to make it harder for you to achieve the look that you want. You know, it, it, it just makes sense, right? I mean, if you don't eat any salt, okay, ever, okay, and then you eat salt, what's your body going to do? It's going to hoard salt because it thinks it's not ever, it's not getting enough of it. It senses there's a deficiency. But if you eat salt all the time in your diet, okay, there's no rise in aldosterone. There's no propensity for your body to hold sodium. So now if you eat some salt, you're not going to all of a sudden get bloated the next day from it because your body's used to it. So same thing with fatty acids. Your essential fatty acid, okay, content of your body is something that your body is constantly monitoring. And if you neglect this, okay, and it's so easy just to take a supplement of this stuff, you're, it's going to have negative ramifications on your bodybuilding goals. I promise you that. And, and your, and your long-term health. So make sure you go get checked. If you want to add to your blood work, you know, I might add this to my blood work check because you know, I always give a list out. If you guys are interested in, in the blood work I suggest or recommend that people get, you can shoot me an email at huge285 at AOL.com. I'm more than happy to send you the list. I think I might add the omega-3, you know, um, index or, and also the omega-3 to omega-6 ratios so that you guys can see actually when you get blood work what your status is and you can see if you're actually deficient in these things or if your balance is off. Most people's balance is way off. That's why it's important to take an essential fatty acid supplement. All right, I hope this helped. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments below, and I will try to address it on the next topic. I'm Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle Supplement and Science Review.